God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Love divine was sent by God to earth in human form. Today we gather to celebrate the life of Jesus, to reflect on the events that led to his crucifixion, and to remember his ultimate loving sacrifice. The final week of his life began in triumph with great celebration as he rode into Jerusalem with his many followers to observe Passover. Thank you. 
the day for the Feast of Unleavened Bread came, during which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed, Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us to eat. After taking their place at the table, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. He also took the cup, gave thanks to God, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus came out and went to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, and his disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground.
It was there in the garden. I'm sorry. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down to the ground. It was there in the garden that Jesus was arrested and taken before the high priest. He was tried, found guilty, and sentenced to death by crucifixion. A wooden cross was strapped to his back and a crown of thorns placed on his head. And he was forced to walk the road to Calvary to be crucified. Jesus was nailed to the cross and it was raised to the sky. Yet even in his agony, he displayed selfless love, praying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. No greater love has anyone than to lay down one's life for one's friends. the criminals were also crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. One of the criminals railed at Jesus saying, aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other one rebuked him saying, we are getting what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise.
It was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. The body of Jesus was wrapped and placed in a tomb. The chief priest went to Pilate and asked for guards to be placed there to prevent the body from being stolen. Then they took a large stone and sealed the entrance to the tomb. On the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. But there came a great earthquake as an angel descended from heaven and rolled back the stone from the tomb and sat on it. The guards were frozen with fear. Then the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified, but he is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Now go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead.
God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God showed us his divine love to us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure, unbounded love thou art. Visit us with, any, with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart.
I'm sure that all of you join me in thanking the choir and thanking Eric and our musicians for all the hard work put into this cantata. Uh, complicated along the way by snow and sickness and delays and getting music and so on and so forth. So all of the obstacles were overcome, thanks be to God. You may be also thankful that I didn't prepare a sermon today. So we will turn to our celebrations and concerns as we gather in worship. We always bring celebrations and the concerns of our hearts. Uh, I know that uh, we will certainly celebrate uh, Jason Roach's juniors. Uh, he's eight and a half months old. He had surgery to fix uh, uh, an abscess in his esophagus. Surgery was successful. He's home and doing well now. We also celebrate uh, Allie, the birth of her twins. It was a, a high-risk pregnancy. The twins were born this week, and they are home and doing well. So we are thankful for that as well. I invite you to share celebrations that you might have. Suzanne. Aunt Barbara's birthday next week. So happy birthday a week early, Barbara. And Jennifer's birthday also. I saw another, Dan. Celebrate the marriage of my granddaughter last weekend. Yes, congratulations to her and her new husband. That's wonderful. Any others? We also have a long list of concerns. People I will ask you to remember in your prayers. I ask you to remember uh, Sarah Lopes as she recovers from a surgery procedure that was uh, held yesterday. Also, Julie Bauer is recovering from a broken hip. She is home. Prayers for John Frazier, for Wendy Gilmet, for Carol Mees uh, Midgley. Prayers for Nancy Raposa and Liz Shemolinsky, Lisa Hicks Nolette, Reverend Karen Dorsheimer Chaplin for Judy Sylvia, for Savannah Polson, Lois Perry, prayers for Elizabeth and Kathy, for Terry and Ralph Cataldo and Neil, all going through cancer treatment, prayers for Pat, prayers for Leo Foley and Margaret Crowley, for Mike Capasano, Eva May Dumoulin, Lori Kearns, for Bob Kelleher and Joe Palmer, prayers for Carol Meeser, uh, recovering from surgery herself, for a man named Keith and another named Eric. Prayers for Katie Millen, uh, for another Carol and for Aaron, for Jeanette Olden and Sue D. Prayers also for Dee Dee Burke, uh, for B. Cronin, for a young woman named Caroline, for Ben Abney. Also for Jean Cobb, for Carolyn Conrad's brother John Costa, for Nancy Rusin and Diane Festa, for Sally and Leonard Moroli, for Christine and Stephanie, prayers for Nancy Breyer and Donna Stanton, for jo John Lowen, for Harry Goldsmith, prayers for Katie Gimler, still undergoing some tests after uh, a serious fall down some stairs, also prayers for her uncle Derek and his family, and for Suzanne Burns, who's been having a lot of tests as well. We'll keep her in our prayers. Are there others we should remember? Jan. Prayers for Paul Lane after a brain bleed. Jen? Peggy McGowan. hit by a drunk driver. Any others? Let us turn to our God in a time of prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, show us your mercy. The echoing sounds of jubilant voices, shouting Hosanna, welcoming Jesus to Jerusalem, those echoes still ring throughout the years. The glad tidings of those who looked to Jesus for hope still sound 
in our hearts and souls. Today we remember how Jesus came to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. We remember how he was welcomed with palm branches, with glad songs, with happy sounds of voices. We remember that he came to Jerusalem to face an enormous conflict, to fight a great battle, to take on the powers of sin and death, a struggle that would be painful and humiliating. For a time it would seem that Jesus was defeated, but we know better. We look beyond today, O oh God, we look beyond the victory that is Jesus' victory, but a victory that he shares with us, his people. His victory has become our victory. You know, O oh God, that we live in a world where many struggle each and every day. Struggle with mighty forces that prevent them from living their life fully and well, prevent them from living life happily, who often suffer in pain and sorrow. And so today, we lift our world before you in our prayers. We pray for those who are the victims of violence in places across our nation and around the world. Senseless violence has claimed the lives of so many, injured more, and has scarred whole communities and nations. We pray for those who, who mourn the loss of loved ones and for those who need the deep healing that only you can provide. We pray, O oh God, for the troubled souls with warped minds who are intent upon hatred and violence. We ask, O oh God, that you would use your strong hand to touch them, to turn them away from hatred, to turn them away from violence, to turn them instead to a path of peace. Today, O oh God, we pray especially for the people of Ukraine, for the people of the Middle East, for the people of Haiti who suffer so much, and for victims of terror everywhere, including those most recently in Moscow. We offer our prayers as well for the first responders, for those who run in when everyone else is running out, for those who protect us night and day on the streets of our cities and towns. We ask your blessing upon them. We ask your blessing as well, O oh God, upon those who serve our nation, whether they are at home or in places far from their homes and families, whether they are in places of security or places of danger and peril, watch over them as they provide security for our nation. We ask, O oh God, this day that you would reach out to touch each and every person who suffers in body and mind and soul. Give them a gift of healing, a healing that brings wholeness and health, a healing that brings new life and power. And we pray, O oh God, today for those who mourn. We ask, O oh God, that those who suffer under the burden of grief, they find their burden relieved by your gentle hand. Give them peace, give them comfort, give them hope. Set our feet, O oh God, we pray, upon the path that leads to Jerusalem this morning. For the journey is not done in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense. Help us in our mind's eye to see and hear the wonders of this week, to hear the shouts of Hosanna in the holy city, but also to know the pain and suffering of Jesus upon the cross. Help us also to sit with him in the upper room as he breaks the bread and shares the cup. And in the time of darkness, O oh God, help us to remember that your power is still not vanquished. And help us to remember once again the power of the resurrection, the hope that Jesus brings. For he is, he is our life, our hope, and our peace. And so all of this we pray in the name of Jesus, our friend, our Savior. Amen. I neglected one announcement. The flowers that beautify our altar today are given by the Niles family.
in memory of Drew Niles. And we're also thankful for uh, the wonderful palms and the decorations of the sanctuary this morning, which gives it a very festive atmosphere. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus when he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us give as each is able, according to the blessings God has given each of us. The morning offering will now be received. Thank you. 
Let the cloud hosannas ring throughout your life, throughout your hearts, throughout your souls. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now to remain with you forevermore. Amen.